Hello there, my name's Jonathan Eddles. I'm the Chief Race Engineer for Scuderia Toro Rosso. Um, I believe a couple of weeks ago, our Chief Mechanic, Domi, took you around uh, the, the garage, introduced you to the garage, garage operations, what goes on in there. Um, I'm hopefully gonna do something similar, but from the engineering side, track side, so I'll just introduce you to uh, the, the pit wall, what we do, and then we'll take a look inside the garage, and then finally we'll go into the, the tree house and talk a, a little bit about that. So at, at the minute, we have a, there's a Clio race, there's lots of support races that happen over the course of a Grand Prix weekend, uh, in and amongst the uh, Formula One sessions. Um, typically, the, the race that's happening, we'll use uh, our pit lane, just uh, not our garages, but just in the pit lane and then we'll often share the, the pit wall and allow them to use, use it. As you can see down the road, lots of other teams are doing the same. So I'll just introduce you, this is the pit wall. Um, so the reason we have a, a pit wall is uh, you could operate from the garage 100% of the time, but in a way in the garage, although you're very close to the car, close to the, the engineers, mechanics and driver, you don't have the full situational awareness that you really need to understand what's uh, what's going on on the track with the weather um, so to get that good situational awareness we develop pit walls everyone has them so we sit out here so we can see the track we can see the the cars the mechanics we can see the competition um, when cars are leaving in qualifying so that, that's the reason we we all sit out here i'll explain who sits where um, first of all um, on the end here we have tanabe san who's the technical director for Honda, he's the one who, if we have any big calls that we need to make during a session or during a race, um, he's the one that has got the responsibility to, um, to make that big call from the, from the PU side. Uh, next to him, uh, Franz Tost, our uh, team principal. Um, obviously everyone's aware who he is. Next one along here, this is uh, for the technical director or head of vehicle performance group, VPG. So that'll be either Jody or Guillaume. Uh, they sit there. Next one along is the team manager. So Graham, um, he's responsible for looking after regulations. He looks after the whole garage, uh, mechanics um, and trackside operations from, from that perspective. Um, I sit next to him, so I sit just here. So let's see, chief race engineer. We've got two engineering crews, one per driver. Um, each of those crews, let's say, works um, independently um, and wants to try to get the best for their car. My role is to try to bring all of that together to get what's best for the team, because obviously what's good for one driver might, might not necessarily be the, the best thing for the team. Um, next to me sits uh, Marco, who's our head of race strategy. Um, as the title suggests, he looks after the whole strategy during the, the race. He and his group also look after competitor analysis. So uh, during the sessions, he's working uh, quite, quite busily with his uh, guys back in Faenza, trying to help uh, feed information to us of where the car's strong or weak so we can react to that. And then the final two positions are for the two race engineers, uh, Pierre and Mattia. Um, obviously they're race engineers for Alex and Danny respectively. Uh, they're not out here all the time um, because during like a normal practice session, the, the situational awareness aspect isn't quite so necessary. And actually it's better for them to be working in the garage on the island where they can look their drivers in the eyes and, and get a much better appreciation of what's required. They can see the tires. If they've got graining, they're, they're there. They can see the car, they can see the mechanics. So during a session, they work over there. But then when it gets to qualifying and in particular the race when you know there could be rain trying to find a good track position in qualifying where you need to look up and down the pit lane then they move out to here and uh, and operate from out here so i think that that covers the the pit wall sounds like the video is going down well so far so uh, so that's good so next um we'll just uh, head over to the the garage so we'll just uh, make sure there's no cars coming So we've not long finished qualifying. The cars are here. We've uh, we've got uh, we've got to start work on the cars um, fairly soon. Uh, one car is obviously uh, pretty much complete. We did find a, a small issue post quality on this other car, which is why we're we're doing some work on it. Um, 
nothing major, but just uh, obviously need to, under part for May, we're allowed to replace items that, that may have been uh, damaged in qualifying. Um, so I'll just uh, move through to the, um, the centre island. So this is the, the engineering island. Um, the layout is actually very similar to the pit wall. So that we've got two sets of screens. One's mainly used for timing and video information and the other one's more for technical information, uh, this lower one. Um, as we have on the pit wall as well, each, uh, each person has a, an intercom. So this intercom links the people here to the pit wall. It links people from here to um, the racks and the, the mechanics. Watch our mirrors for Ricardo for behind. Charge on, charge on. Watch our mirrors coming now. Then big gap to science. It's also the radio system, so they can direct uh, communications to all of the mechanics. This also is a link back to the operations room. We have one in Vista, we have one in Fienza, um, and also in Sakura. And this is also a link to Honda. So I'll just run you through who's, uh, who works where and what they do. So this position here, and it's a mirror image on the other side, is the race engineer. They stand at this point so that they've got uh, a good view of the car, the mechanics, and uh, a good awareness of what's going on. Um, main roles of the race engineer during uh, sessions and during the weekend, they're the one that's effectively directly responsible for managing, setting up, and, and running the car. They're the ones that you'll hear on the, the driver radio, so they're the ones talking to the, um, the driver. So they build up a really, really close relationship. They understand what the driver needs. You have one of those per driver. Supporting them, um, who uh, works in this position here, is the performance engineer. Um, so their role is, as I say, to support the, the race engineer. These guys spend most of their time looking at the data um, that we capture from the car. Uh, we capture gigabytes of data over a race weekend. Um, and their job is to take all of that information and try to figure out how can we optimize the performance of this car to this track, to the conditions that we have during, during the weekend. They suggest, for example, setup changes to the race engineers. They could be uh, spring changes, anti-roll bar changes, dampers, um, ride heights. There's so many things we can change on the car. So these two work closely together. Ultimately, it's the race engineer that's responsible and makes the final call for, for what happens, but the two here work extremely closely together on, uh, on managing the car. Then we have um, a position on the end here. Um, on this side, uh, we have Ali, who's our uh, trackside aerodynamicist. Um, so he's responsible for um, analyzing the aerodynamics from a, from a numbers perspective, so analyzing the data. Um, but he's also in the garage and in this position so that he's got a good view of, of the car. On the other side, if we just walk around, we won't get too close to uh, as we've got some work going on. Um, on this side, um, exactly as the other side, race engineer on that end, overseeing the car, performance engineer in the middle. And actually on this position, we have um, Alex, who's our tire engineer. Um, again, really important for him to be in the garage because then he's got um, a, a really good uh, sight of, the, of both cars, actually. Normally that wouldn't be here. So Ali could see this car from the other side and likewise Alex can see that car from here. So we put them on the end so that they can, they can see both cars. So Alex, the trackside tire guy, um, he's responsible for analyzing data. So we take track temperature, all of the sensors on the car. Um, and he works with both engineering crews to uh, try to optimize the performance of the car from a, from a tire perspective. Okay, so I think that covers it from uh, the engineering in the garage, uh, the center island. Actually, I'll just show you one other thing. So actually the mechanics are just about to do uh, some pit stop practice. When they do the pit stops here, um, after every stop, there's a uh, software logging in the um, pit stop gantry that live will tell us exactly the performance of the pit stop each corner, the performance of the jacks. So, looks like they're about to do their first pit stop. So, before we uh, get the wheel guns, we'll head back over to the uh, tree house where Guillaume will talk through uh, engineering from that aspect. Hi everyone, uh, my name is uh, Guillaume Dezoteux. 
I'm the head of vehicle performance and I work with uh, Jonathan. I will introduce you the treehouse, which is the engineer office where we stay when the cars are not running and when we analyze all the data with the, with the drivers to try to make the car faster for, for the next time we run on track. So let's go. So that's the steps we go through every day. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the treehouse. That's a sofa we never use, but it's there, so in, just in case. Uh, here we have uh, France office uh, and the logistics office. And that's the engineering office. Sorry, <laughs> engineering office we, we spend the time on. So here we go. Um, so this is where, just after the session finishes, we come and uh, analyze the data. Uh, I sit there uh, next to Jonathan, the chief race engineer, and Graham, Graham is here, uh, together with Alex, the reliability manager. Uh, so um, that's where uh, we brief and debrief. We have like four meetings, four or five meetings per day where we prepare the sessions. We debrief with the drivers on the car balance, car behavior, and uh, overnight uh, we uh, make an engineering review with our colleagues from uh, Faenza and, uh, and Vista. So we have an intercom system that we use for all our communications with uh, factory people. Um, so both crews are settled there on each side of the, of the table. So on this side, it's uh, Alex uh, crew. So he's there with these uh, engineers, a race engineer, performance engineer, so that usually work at the island and the pit wall when the car, cars are running. And they, they settle there. Uh, in um, uh, between between session and overnight, we also have uh, other experts for engineering. We have the tire engineer, aerodynamics engineer, the control engineers, and uh, also a gearbox and, and system engineer. Uh, so uh, generally, that's where we prepare uh, the cars, the car setup. We uh, analyze all the data. Uh, this is where we try to make the car faster, uh, find the best uh, strategy. Uh, for, for the race. So that's where uh, Daniel uh, sits. So uh, with these engineers, so Mattia, the race engineer, Ben, uh, his performance engineer. So uh, generally, when the drivers are not uh, busy with uh, uh, PR commitments, uh, this is where they spend their time uh, looking at the data, uh, watching uh, videos, onboard cameras, uh, competitor analysis. So. Uh, Actually, they spend quite a lot of time with us here in this office. Uh, and we also have an office for Honda people. So uh, Tanabe-san usually stays with us. Don't, don't tell Red Bull Racing. He's often there. So. So uh, during uh, post-session meetings, uh, we all sit here uh, and we uh, debrief the, the session. So those guys, uh, would uh, go through what happened in the session. Uh, we would use this uh, intercom system with the people uh, back at the factory and also uh, people in the garage in Bista and uh, in Japan, in uh, Sakura. Um, the target of the, those meetings is to review everything that happened on the cars. So the driver would explain what they felt, what were the main limitations uh, on the different tires, on different fuel loads, uh, the various experts who try to give a bit of context of uh, what we have been uh, testing, what we have been uh, achieving, and what we think are the uh, things we should improve uh, on, on the cars. Uh, France would uh, close the meeting, would usually stand on the other side, uh, and uh, it would like make a summary of, uh, of where we think we are, and uh, try to define some, uh, some targets, ambitious targets, for, uh, for, the next, uh, for the next session or the next qualifying. Uh, and you, on Sunday morning, uh, the Marco, the strategy engineer, presents the various uh, strategy options that are being discussed with the drivers. So the tire choice, the starting tire choice, how many stops we think we're going to do and in which window we're going to stop. So uh, that's what we discuss. Uh, that's the last briefing before we go racing. And uh, usually this is uh, quite a confidential one. So we try to not to have uh, too many guests coming into uh, into those meetings, uh, and this is where we define the fuel load we're going to put on the car, which tire we're going to start on, and uh, what what strategy we're going to we're going to go for.
Okay, so that's about it. Uh, thank you for joining this tour. I hope you enjoyed seeing the engineering side, uh, track side uh, of uh, Toro Rosso. And uh, see, you, see you next time. Ciao, ciao.